So it's, uh, I think you're seeing my Chrome probably. Yep. So chart release, it was these five branches in addition to the, the main Ortelius Ortelius branch. Exactly. So, so they're all done. All the PRs are in place. If you went to any of them, am I sharing a tab or the entire Chrome? Uh, the, the entire Chrome. Okay, cool. So that's this thing now has, you know, each of the five repos would have their releases and okay. they've all got their own GitHub pages index. Now, the problem with this is that you've, at the moment, you've got six repositories and six index YAMLs, which not so great, right? Right. So what we had been thinking of doing is Brad had created this Ortelius charts repo. Um, this would be the central hosting repo. And we've got a bit of work um, done in there. What I'm doing is I'm just doing a, a script that you pass in a list of repos. So eventually if this list of six repos becomes 10 or 20, all you do is append an extra repo name to, to the list and it will just pull the individual index YAML. So uh, let me see if I can, I'll make it share the entire screen to, so it's, um, yeah, I can see Visual Studio now. I'm not sure if I'm on the right. Uh, yeah, so this, it's just doing a JavaScript type thing. You just pass in the repos of the indexes, uh -huh. it indexes it, and it generates, well, a combined index YAML. So we okay. could run this on a script that, I don't know, does it. Uh, ideally, best case scenario is whenever any of those repos update, you would want to, to pull it. I haven't gotten to that part yet. Right now, it's just uh, we can set it on, I don't know, maybe a timer, maybe every hour or so. You you would check it and see if it, it does what it's supposed to. Right. Uh, every hour, it just pulls all the, all the repos and updates it. Now, so one I, quick question. Um, so right now in your example, you have uh, one tar file out there. Now, we go and do an update. What happens to the index.yaml when we have multiple releases out in that microservice repo? Does that make sense? Do yeah, we have do we have more entries in the uh, let's see if there there are more yeah. so you're saying, for example, you have the main chart and then well, yes, yeah, so, so like right here, uh, you have yeah, exactly. You have four releases. Let's say well, just go up to your, your main one. Um, so, oh, go back to the... Uh, the index YAML? The, no, go back to the um, microservice repo that you were just at. Right. Uh, that thing needs to go away. So, all right, one of the microservice repos. Yeah. And see how you have um, releases one. Mm -hmm. And we got uh, 1.0. One, uh, 1 now mm -hmm. tomorrow we make a change and we publish um, and we're going to get a 1.1 1 .1, uh, in the releases list. Mm -hmm. Now what happens with the index.yaml, the combined index.yaml? So I believe what that would do, I um, believe because I've not actually tested that, is that it would still have the same dependency package cut and that will just go 1.1 and the url just points to the new release so your old release i believe would still sit there but it will no longer be called by our artifact hub because it'll just sit there but now our url is updated to 011 okay um and but this, so there would be no way for somebody to install or see the older versions that's a good question. I'm I'm not sure. I don't know if you know you I, would have yeah version like this v2. Would you have dependency package cud v1 v2 v3 all of them listed in there? Right. That's what um, I'm curious about. Is because we'll we'll need to make sure because what will backwards happen backwards compatible. Yeah. Well, what will happen is if you look at what's in uh, QA versus what's in production. Uh, production will have older um, charts Stables. than yes, they would be stable, and 
uh, QA would be the the testing stuff. So, you know, when we go to look at it from the artifact hub, you know, we should be able to see both um, both of those versions out there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I guess one way that we could test it is in right now this artifact hub it's being linked to one of my my forked versions okay. so a potential thing that we could try is in here uh we'll, we'll just you know create a, an updated version of this chart i don't know we increment the the version of here yep so and we'll be, see if it does yeah. too so line five we go to 1.1 1 .1. exactly so yeah that's something that we could try dependency package cut. All right, I'll just swap over. Uh, do I want to do a dirty update? Ugh. It's your own local but, fork, so. Yeah, it's a local fork. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. It's you can, you can always fork. wipe the history out, so. Just to interrupt on that one. Uh, normally, yeah. when you're doing QA-related branches, which are not yet production ready, uh, you install the CRDs, et cetera, separately. So you have uh, within your chart, you have the option of actually installing post installation, which uh, get branch to refer, et cetera. So we could go down that route rather than actually making changes to the chart itself. This is something which is similar to what I did for Argo when it was a pre-release. Okay. So that's something we can consider. Mm -hmm. Right. So right now in this instance, well, I guess because we're just doing a test run, um, I'm just going to uprev the this version and seeing if the chart releaser does a separate release, so right. to speak. Right. Uh, uprev number. So that should yeah, the do its happy should. thing. Chart releaser, releasing charts, update. Okay, let's see what, what exactly did it yeah. do. So, all right, releases two, you've got 01, 010. And going back into the index and in GitHub pages, let's see if that created a uh, dependency cut 011. Yeah, it it, uh, it bumped API version. So it it increased. Well, it didn't save the 010. I guess okay. that's what we were um, thinking about. Right. So potentially that might be a problem. Yeah, what the? Because yeah, it just did an append. Yeah, oh, it just it just like replaced it. Yeah. Actually, but, that workflow it's something that I th deploy. I think I was still using it. Yeah, the charts repo URL in there. That's why it's adding the other. For unrelated oh, yeah. ones. Yeah. Nope, wrong branch. But uh, so now we know what what exactly happens. It bumps it up. It doesn't. I wonder if the if the API version was. Uh, I don't know, because what we had done was we inc incremented the version number, but not. Anything else? Not the app version or mm -hmm. API version. I I don't know if you changed any of those things. Would that create a separate entry, or does it just replace altogether? Well, go ahead and um, we can only find out by trying, right? Yeah, just go ahead and move move both of them at the same time, and
So the other thing while this one's running, we had tried doing a merging of the, ooh, what's it unhappy about? Error creating GitHub release because cut one one. Right, it it's trying to override the exact same O one one when it already existed. Oh, uh, on, that's on the uh, GitHub release side. Yes. So I, I think if we were to change API versions and app versions, that itself also needs to go up. Right. So if you touch anything. All right. Try that again. And what were you saying about the other? Uh, so I, I had tried the, um, well, combining YAML files together and uploading it up to the Artifact Hub. Yeah. And so that's happy that it works because one of the things that I was concerned about is the YAML file just looked a little different. Okay, that's char releases happy. We've got three releases, so 0.1.2. Yeah. And let's have a look at the index YAML again. Dependency package, CUD. Right, so it just replaces it all together. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how that would affect this when, when it eventually does do the um, check again. And I, I can't set that. To, I think it just does it at, at the hour. Right. So I, I'm wondering whether or not it's going to wipe that out or would Artifact Hub itself keep a record of version 010, 011, 012, Right. I don't. I don't think it would because if it's pulling from our repo, I, I am. My guess is that it's just gonna wipe it out. But we can only find out in twelve minutes. Yeah. Uh, see if WordPress is an artifact hub. Because when I was looking at them, they they do releases like crazy. Uh, I don't know uh, which uh, bit, the bit, Bitnami one. Uh, I don't know if it's yeah that one. Let's see versions. See so, over on the right where it has chart versions. Uh huh. That's what I'm curious about. Yeah, that, that might potentially. Do I'm wondering it. if if Artifact Hub is kind of caching it yeah caching it, it or, or doing something storing it so we can find that out eventually by seeing if there are some chart versions 25th of october where is that pulling that number from that was probably the the date that you uploaded it i just did this this morning actually today huh it, it oh, looks like it's it's what was that, Amit? It looks like it's an RSS feed, hmm. which is how it is getting it. October release one. Well, actually, let's look back at my GitHub and see when that release was done. Now that that would be why, because that package has been alive 18 days ago. That's why it's the October thing. Mm -hmm. So it's not when I uploaded it, it's when the actual, the release was actually done. Right. That makes sense. Okay, that's good. Um, yeah, that aside, I guess that's the that's the only thing we can check on. Get this bar away. So the other thing that I was potentially concerned about is, well, the index.yaml in here, it's got a bit of an, oh wait, it fixed itself. Sorry, this is um, tedious charts. Damn, that's... Uh, I need to go to my version of Vertidius charts. Hmm. 
and find my index YAML. Uh, it's this where, for whatever reason, my in, whenever I generated it, the URL goes from, it's supposed to be, you know, that standard YAML format. Mm -hmm. And it, when I regenerated it, it did this multi-line string format. And that's why I tested it by sending it up to Artifact Hub and seeing if it's going to get angry at us. Apparently not. It's, it's fine. So this is yeah, what it's, it's supposed it's to look like without that multi-line thing. Right. And the, well, the multi-line thing is probably still valid YAML. So. Yeah. So it, it didn't complain. Right. But yeah, that's, um, that's what we got up to, I guess. Cool. We've got this charts thing. And once it's ready, we'll create a GitHub pages, same, same exact process. And in Artifact Hub, all you do is you link to Ortedius charts rather than Ortedius, Ortedius, and you would have all, all whichever repos that you've got in there. So, right. So the the Ortelius yes. charts is is kind of redundant. That repo is kind of redundant because we have the Ortelius GitHub Pages branch. That's going to be um, these, pretty much identical, right? So these are the uh, GitHub Pages branches of all your individual repos. Ortelius yeah. charts. What it does is it just goes and grabs the index from as many of these as you need. So eventually you could have Ortedis uh, other package and right. you'd still do the same GitHub pages chart releaser workflow because that does the Helm index, Helm package, all that business and uploads them as releases. Yeah. And all that does is um, retrieves that index so it knows what the uh, URL to the releases are and generate a combined index YAML. Right. So this this is just a combiner thing. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 I kind of figured we were going to need this, so I'm glad it wasn't too too messy. It's yeah, and it's quite extensible. Like what well, what I just did here of the Ortiz other packages, you just add it onto the list, and you you'll it'll just get merged. So to complete this part, all we do is in the script, you know, just run like a node main JS. It generates the index YAML and commit that YAML to the GitHub pages branch. Right. So okay. This yeah, that file, yeah, that doesn't that doesn't normally exist. You just node main. And yeah. And after that, you just go, I don't know, git commit. We just put that as part of the script. Right. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's going to work out nice. Oh, there you go. Dependency package cut is now v3. Why is that v3? Where is it pulling it from? Uh, right there. That's the last. Uh, I'm not sure why it's getting a dependency package cut v3. Oh, it's because it's pulling it from mine. Yeah, that oh. makes sense. Yeah. I, I was worried. I, did I break the, the main or tedious one? <laughs> so, uh, that, cool. Yeah, that's looking good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll I'll be committing this thing. And the last last bit is what I was talking about with the whole um, you know, node main yeah. git commit bit, and it should work. Uh probably the, the easiest thing would be just create a a docker file to run uh run it as an image because from a like a github action you can run any docker uh image mm -hmm. um so that may be just the easy way to kind of bundle it up and throw it so we can have it as a, a github action mm -hmm. just a little little docker file and then we could put we can um build it and push it over to quay and reference it that way mm -hmm. Yep, makes sense. Cool. Uh, the only other thing that we may want to do on this is, I know it's not a big deal for us, but the list of repos, maybe we should make that a property file. Yeah, I was thinking it might, uh, whether we've got some environmental variables of some sort. Uh, I don't know, property files, same deal. Yeah, just think about it. It's not a big deal. I mean, right now it's not, it's a, uh, it works perfectly and all, all of us know how to go in and change an array. So 
At least this is quite straightforward, right? Yeah, <laughs> sometimes sometimes <laughs> when you you go have to read the property file and you have to parse it, it adds, adds more complexity than just being able to go in and add, up, update an array. Mm -hmm. So, all right, looking awesome. I like it. Cool. Yeah, that's uh, that's what we've been up to. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So what I've been doing is on my side. Um, working with uh, Ortelius and Deploy Hub to, uh, when you go to do a deployment, that it goes and creates and updates the values files correctly and gets the, the image tags that were for that component in place. Um, so the charts themselves have the right uh, image tags, uh, you know, to, to, to install that Helm chart with. So um, that I've been working on getting that sorted out. So we'll have a, a, a nice clean way when you go through the CI process, the CI process will uh, create the components in Ortelius. And then from there, when you tell Ortelius to do a deployment, we'll actually dump out the uh, image tag into the properties and check it in to the right repos. Uh, you know, push it to the right repos. And then then after that, it's a matter of just uh, Argo uh, picking up those changes for us. Mm -hmm. So we're getting close. Cool, all good. There are a lot of moving parts in this this process. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's surprisingly complicated when you try to scale GitOps. <laughs> Um, well, that that's it from my end, I guess. All right, Ahmed, do you have anything from your side? Uh, no, I've I've been really swamped with other work, unfortunately. Oh, no worries. Uh, no. Okay, just double checking. Uh, and how about you, Brad? You've just been the the guy pushing the buttons to say send it yeah. to the production. Yeah. No, <laughs> um, just been working with Ben. Yeah. Um, it's going really well. Cross check um, at all. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, no real. Ben's done all my updates, so yeah. <laughs> all right. I'm stealing cool. your story points. There you go. You're gonna you. You Ben's gonna be the star here, and <laughs> Brad's yeah. gonna be in the back. <laughs> no, he's he, he's doing really well actually. It's uh, I, I think you're enjoying it a lot as well, aren't you, Ben? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's a good it's learning first, experience um, doing all this stuff. It's his first open source project as well, so. Nice. He's learning good standards and in proper ways, you know, instead but, of being siloed into the organization, which is good. I'm yeah. learning what Brad's teaching me. I'm not sure if that's a good standard. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't learn it from me because I take all the shortcuts. <laughs> yeah, I, I go and commit directly to repos just to save myself time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Marty, Marty Jackson always um, approves uh, pull requests. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he, he, he sit there all day. I, I know we uh, we freaked him out when Karam did the license update, which was twenty thousand files. And, or, oh, and, wow. and Mark, he's like, "What are you guys doing? <laughs> like, don't worry about it. <laughs> we're, we're just updating a few files. <laughs> a few. <laughs> I don't think that guy sleeps because, like, whenever we do a pull request, he's like, Manny Jackson approves. It's like, what?'" I don't, I don't, I don't think he sleeps either. And he's not only doing that uh, for our project, but he, he's approving things for like the, the CDF landscape, the CDF TOC. So he's yeah. like on all these projects to sit here improving stuff and reviewing it. It's crazy. We were just checking out his Git, like Git actions and GitHub, you know, that green box thing. Yeah, he, he does not miss a single day. <laughs> That's no. like a, a boxes of greens and everything. Like, yeah. What are you doing, man? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. All right, looking good, guys. I like it. Um, so, uh, I guess next steps will be just uh, getting that cleaned up a little bit. And um, if you could keep an eye on um, how Artifact Hub uh, deals with the multiple chart versions. Very good point. It would have just question. updated itself. So... Oh, it just came up on the hour. So let's see. Uh bugger it just says new chart version so it it didn't um store the, the previous one let me just 
share that. So this is the uh, dependency package CRUD or CUT. And yeah. it's just done 010. It didn't store 010. Oh, yeah. It's, right. It's two now. So that's not a good thing. So we'll definitely have to figure that part out. Yep. Yeah, it, it shouldn't do a replace. It should do an addition. Um, I'm wondering, what, what's uh, the pull-up? Um, do you know if there is a spec definition for the index.yaml somewhere lying around? Not that I'm aware of, no. I think that's going to be maybe a chart museum type of thing. We maybe. Yeah. Uh, and it, it really did just wipe itself out. So it's yeah. not cool. <laughs> uh, what would that be? Home chart. Oh, home. Let's see what they have. Repo index. I have to run to another meeting, everybody. Um, oh, no worries. Well, I'm just going to poke around on this uh, home repo thing real quick, and that's sure. we're going to wrap up. So thanks. Yep. Thanks, Brad. Yeah. See you. See ya. Right. Have a good week, everybody. You too. Directory structure. Mm, this gives like a quick overview. Yeah, I'm looking through the, the release direction and I'm, I'm sure it should have some option that says, you know, don't delete previous releases. Oh, interesting. Uh, so let me share my screen real quick. Mm -hmm. Let me find it. Yeah, it so I'm on the, um, let me throw this in the chat. Chart repo. Go away, go away, come on. So the interesting part is it talks about adding new charts to an existing repository and you use this merge flag to incrementally add new charts to existing YAML. Yeah, that makes sense. You should do a merge, not a straight up replace yeah so somehow i'm wondering if there's a kind of like a bug in that chart packager where it is um just doing a replace instead of a, a uh, it sounds like it's doing that that first paragraph that each time you want to paragraph where it just rebuilds the index from scratch and without mm -hmm. the merge flag so um i'm i'm trying to find where we can pass in this merge flag so it you know, doesn't do that. Yeah. Or, you know, the other way to handle it would be on your uh, JS to combine everything. Mm -hmm. um, instead of wiping out uh, the previous index.yaml, uh, you read that in first and then do the combine. Mm -hmm. To take the old index YAML um, and do like a comparison. If if A and equals B, don't do anything. But if there's an increment, append yeah. rather than replace. Yeah, yeah. I, I have okay. a feeling that's what we're going to need to do. Mm -hmm. That way, each um, 
well, the Ortiz charts repo would then have your master record of every release ever done. Right. Whereas in the microservices repos, they would just hold the very latest image, uh, very latest chart. I mean, all the releases would still be in there. Exactly. And next, YAML would only refer to one thing. Exactly. That's kind of. I'm actually kinda... thinking of doing it the other way around, I like doing that that combining thing in in the chart release or action that way. You know, your MS dependency package that it it should actually note down all the different revisions on its own because that's a repo that's hosting the the tree releases. So yeah, it should know off the tree releases and the combiner just does one thing combining it. Yeah, so if you, you have to see if the the chart releaser um, can deal with a merge. Yeah, this this incre- this incremental piece. Yeah, uh, I'll I'll look that up. I mean, that's it's definitely not well. It's not desired action. How it's wiping it. Right. But don't know. I'll I'll see. Play, play around with it. And see what see what you mm-hmm. come up with. Mm-hmm. And we're one step forward. It's just actually getting to the finish line. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is just, you know, we have to take the baby steps to <laughs> correct, you know, find out what these things do. <laughs> and then once we figure out what they do, then we can, you know, get them to act the way we want them to. Release action. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure it should be able to do something of that sort, but yeah, I'll find out. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, All right. Awesome. Uh, looking great. great, guys. Thank you. Catch you next time. All right. We'll catch you later. Yeah, Steve, Steve, Emmett. See ya. Hey, folks.